Brian, have you been on the 10th? Have you ever been on the Fire Kid subreddit? Dicey, dicey. You can criticize my comedy, my podcasting skills, whatever. But if you go personal and I see you in the street, well, well there's going to be repercussions. You know, I don't want to beat anybody up. You know what I'm saying? But Doesn't it seem kind of immature at this point in your life? Uh, as a dad, as a father yeah. of two at 38. Yeah, yeah that's f***ing weird. Oh, and you're going to physically hurt each other? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because we're human beings. I haven't been in a fight in f***ing since the UFC. It, it, I mean, it, it would never come to that. I'd rather, you know, crush them with words. Brendan Shaw may be the dumbest person I've ever heard in front of a microphone. So mind-numbingly stupid and talentless, it's honestly unbelievable. You ever tried throwing a trolley, Chen? No, I don't know what you're talking about, actually. Throwing a trolley. Is that what you said? <laughs> what? Con Conor McGregor threw a trolley through a bus window. But calling Brendan dumb or unfunny doesn't even come close to summarizing the absolute embarrassment that is Brendan Schaub. It's mind-blowing what zero talent and a friendship with Joe Rogan will get you. He's got what, 14 different podcasts at this point? From The King and the Sting to Fighter and the Kid, The Schaub Show, his own network Thick Boy Studios, and now he's getting ready to release his second comedy special in March. Shot my special in Dallas. My team shot it shot the commercial for it. I put all the financing behind it. So yeah, pay release in March. Nice. How are we as a nation allowing this to go on? He's not just unfunny. That much has been well documented. Shab is somehow barely a comedian and also the embodiment of everything wrong with comedians today. He's a thin-skinned, arrogant phony, a mush-mouthed joke thief, a comedian more concerned about his appearance than his ability to write jokes or even speak in coherent sentences. He's fucked over everyone around him, from his friends to his family. And on top of all that, he's a hypocrite that actively censors people. Brendan loves cancel culture. So yeah, I don't like him. He's constantly making excuses, brushing off any and all criticism as wholly made up by irrational online haters. What's a harder audience to win over, MMA fans or comedy fans? Comedy fans, easily. Comedy fans are tough to win over, especially with my background. I look like the guy that bullied you in high school, but I'm actually really nice and uh, I have good jokes, so. No Baba. No one got bullied by a potato-faced metrosexual mongoloid in high school. You're just insufferable and bad at your job, bad at talking, a bad friend, a bad husband. You're bad at a lot of things, but you really suck at monogamy. Like you really don't like people pointing that out. I mean, you could keep false flagging videos to get them pulled down, but that's not gonna stop you from trying to fuck everything that moves, including Bobby Lee's wife. I had a guy that was like, why don't you walk me to my truck, this married guy, where I'm like, and we know him, I'm not gonna say who it is, but um, he's like, know him. why don't you give me a walk, why don't you give, like, you should walk me to my truck. I'm like, so what, I can blow you? Like, what? Wait, like, who was it? Oh. So wait, we walked to my car, I finished my spot being very good at comedy, you not being good at comedy. <laughs> And then, that's a so, clue. By the way, I don't want like to be seen with you. That's I don't. The biggest clue you could ever give. If Shab just came out and said, "Yeah, I cheat on my wife," so what? I wouldn't care. I don't think most people would care. Well, maybe Bobby, but still, Shab would rather continue to lie to his audience and pretend he's something he's not. So he's still telling people he's happily married and a great husband, which only fuels more people to investigate his extramarital activities. I think he's hoping if he lies to enough people, he'll start to believe it himself. Fake it till you make it, I guess. It's worked so far. But maybe we shouldn't judge Brendan based on what kind of a husband he is. According to him, that's not how you judge a man. You judge a man based off what kind of father he is. Joe Rogan has taught me so much in life, more than anybody else in my life. He's the best dad I know. I'm a fucking beast of a dad. I pride myself on that. And I, you base a person, I don't give a fuck what business they're in, what profession they're in, you judge them based off the way they treat their kids. Okay, we'll go by that metric. You're still a piece of shit. Brendan named his kids Tiger and Boston for what I can only assume is to ensure they're bullied every day at school. That's not a name you want. It's a nickname you earn, maybe. I mean, fuck it. Why not name the next kid Demon Slayer or Pussy Destroyer? Those are cool, tough names. Cooler and tougher than Tiger. You could tell Shab regrets naming his kid Tiger, because now he just calls him T. He'll probably start calling the other one B when he realizes Boston is also a pretty dumb name. Those poor kids. 
And if Brendan looks up to Joe as a great role model for what a father should be, why is his approach to fatherhood the complete opposite of Rogan's? You'd think a guy that works with two accused sexual predators would be a little bit more cautious about posting pictures of his children online, but apparently not. I went ahead and blurred the kids' faces because I have more respect for their privacy than their own father does, but all this shit's public. Brendan puts it out there. I really think Shab just had kids so we could force them to dress up and pose like him for his Instagram and Twitter. You never see Joe Rogan posting pictures of his daughter dressed up like him hunting elk and snorting ivermectin. That'd be weird. This is gross. It's exploitative, and people say really mean shit about his son in the comments. It's, it's, it's not nice. I, I, I frankly don't approve. But Brendan doesn't stop at embarrassing himself or his family. He's pretty quick to open his big Botox mouth and fuck over his friends too. Like his role model, Joe Rogan, the guy who handed him his career on a silver platter. He outed him in 2019 for also cheating on his wife. Listen, I, I know some bald fucking dudes are slanging dick out there. Look at Dana White, Rogan, uh, that's it. Ticey dicey, B. You don't want to go pissing off Papa Rogan like that. He'll delete your episodes in a fucking heartbeat you slip up like that again. It's so funny, Brendan is the most frequent guest on JRE, the most popular podcast in the world, with a total of 83 appearances, and he struggles to get 100,000 views on his Thick Boy Studios channel. And it's not like Brendan has a different audience, it's the same people that watch Rogan, so his entire fan base is made up of the less than one percent of JRE listeners that are able to stomach his CTE-induced blabbercast. I mean, look at some of these numbers, dude. They're not great. You'd be hard-pressed to find a single comedian with something positive to say about Chubb. Even within Rogan's circle, it doesn't take a genius to pick up on the fact that these people have no fucking respect for the guy. You started a podcast that became very successful. One day I'm going through fucking Facebook. And I see that fucking Brendan Schaub's doing stand-up at the store, and I go, no. I go, why is he doing this? I, I, I don't want him, you know, in my heart, I'm like, and I wasn't hating. I know Brendan Schaub yeah. hates us a lot, too. It's another one that doesn't <laughs> like Schaub us. doesn't like you? Yeah, well, to be fair, you know, again, we made fun of him for possibly having CTE, but whatever, it's not a big deal. We I, don't know, I don't think that's, uh, like, a joke. He's, he's new. He's fucking new at stand-up. Yeah, I know. And he's doing a fucking. He's got a special that uh, was. I'll I'll go ahead. If he said my podcast is funny, I'll say that his special was very funny. Ari Shafir. Yes. Do you respect Brendan Shaw as a? <laughs> <laughs> But maybe they're being too harsh. Maybe Brendan's right and they really are just haters. I mean, Shab's a student of comedy. It's been his passion ever since he was a boy. The man studied this shit. He knows the names of all the most influential comedians. You know, I'm obsessed with comedy, so yesterday I probably watched eight comedy specials and watched all this YouTube stuff and read this book, so... Let's say George Carlton, if he's a Carl, George Carl, Carl, Carlton. Carl, Carl. Carl. Let's say who inspired him? Carlin, George Carlin. George Carlin. Carlin. Now, if he shoved his dick in her face, <laughs> yeah, we got problems. He started jacking off Louis K. C. style. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Howard Stern is Howard Stern, but Open Anthony was kind of like that original podcast thing where it was like they were just saying and doing whatever. I love when they Patrice wanted, was on, but on the radio, yeah, yeah, it's not a joke anymore. Brendan genuinely has CTE. His brain is leaking out of his cauliflower ears. He's always been pretty stupid, even before he stepped into the octagon in 09, But it's got so much worse over the years and he's only 38. His brain's not getting any better, it's broken. This motherfucker's out here linking clear troll accounts in his Twitter bio and not realizing for days the mistake he's made. He's a, he's a fucking idiot. I think a lot of people get hung up on how stupid or unfunny Shab is and forget that he's a proven joke thief. Like he stole Nick Swartzen's fajita bit nearly word for word. When you order a fajita, you order them and then a couple minutes later they bring them out and it is loud. I want that same feeling. I go to Chili's in order for Hina's. Smoke. It's like 4th of July. Everyone's like, oh my god. I think those for Hina's hit the floors off. And he's like, what the fuck, Mark? Right here. And he hasn't shown any signs of stopping. In fact, he's still stealing, like in the set from May of 2021. He's just gotten a little bit more clever with his plagiarism. You allow a grown man and Michael Jackson to take your kid, your son, to Hawaii for eight days by himself? The fucking king of pop rolls out the red carpet Honolulu for eight days? I'm sucking his dick, you feel me? <laughs> 
You know how good it must have felt to go to school the next day after that shit? Hey, Billy, how was the weekend? How was my weekend? <laughs> Michael Jackson sucks my dick! <laughs> I know it seems harsh, but man, somebody's got to teach these kids. There's no such thing as a free trip to Hawaii. That's like cutting your kid in fucking honey, giving them two trout, send them into the Rocky Mountains, and be like, you believe those fucking grizzly bears got those kids, man? That's insane. Having women work with men, right, is like having a grizzly bear work with salmon. Dipped in honey, like, so... He's not improving comedically. He's just stealing from better comics. And you could say that's a stretch, that those are two separate jokes from two different comedians, or that Brendan's joke is similar but different enough, more of a remix of old ideas, if anything. But that is literally the exact defense Carlos Mencia used when Rogan called him out for sampling jokes. You better get the fuck off stage, because if anything you say is even remotely funny, I'm gonna make it mine. And all I'm gonna do is say, Mexican in the front. I'm like a rapper. I just sample shit and make it my own. Was that really my song? I don't know, but it sounds like mine, but it kind of sounds like somebody else's. It's a hit, bitch! Yeah, pretty similar scenario here. Same shit, different toilet. So why is no one rushing the stage during one of Brendan's sets and making him answer for his unoriginality like Rogan did to Mencia? Someone, please do that and record it. I'd like to hear him explain why his jokes are so similar to other comics. The punchlines are just barely changed, enough to have plausible deniability. Trout dipped in honey as opposed to salmon dipped in honey. But even talking about Brendan stealing jokes is putting the cart before the horse, because Brendan's single biggest hurdle in life, his arch nemesis, is the English language. He talks for a living, and he struggles to do that. Shabism after Shabism, his subscribers will tell you, it's damn near impossible to listen to Brendan for more than 30 seconds without a mispronunciation or made up word or phrase. It's so well done, it's uh, it really stroke at the strings on the heart, dude. It's so good. And for the rest of America that don't subscribe to what this cancel culture is, for the rest of the world that don't subscribe to this toxic, toxic silence in of voices, now I'm gonna hire someone like the best in the game, especially uh, his money and his wife's money. I'm hiring fucking Martin Scorsese or whatever yeah, the fuck yeah. it is. Scorsese. Scorsese, Scorsese and to Scorsese. do my shit. You really do feel dumber after listening to Brendan speak for any prolonged period of time. I could feel my brain cells committing seppuku forcing myself to sit through this shit. Look at the top comment on this video. The bar is so astonishingly low for Brendan. All he has to do is try to speak properly and his audience is amazed, dumbfounded by his improvement, his ability to somewhat put together sentences. Humility goes a long way with people. Thankfully, Shab was blessed with that gift. He respects everyone, even those less fortunate than him. He values their opinions just the same as everyone else's. Because the type of person that were to go on YouTube and write, leave a negative message, to even create an account to, to be that way is, I, I don't associate with those people. I don't know those people. It does not matter to me. What do you care? It'd be the same as if a cat created a profile. That's a good example. Who cares? Cat. Even a homeless guy. If a homeless guy was just creating a profile and talking shit, they have, it doesn't matter. Brendan's a principled man. He doesn't believe in double standards. It's not like he just agrees with everything Rogan says because he's a sycophantic opportunistic leech. No, he lets everyone speak and doesn't just pig-headedly barge his way into conversations with all the subtlety of a battering ram. The biggest thing, when you go, you have friends that have but real money good. and you see what- It's not good. You because, see what- Because also, but but also yeah, yeah, but, but, right. I'll you, but I'll tell you this, I don't know. See, it's weird. It's I, not though. They don't well, listen. Brandon, they, in the middle of the country, they listen. In the weird. middle of the country, they listen to Sirius XM, the truck driver shit. Listen, first of all, if you're getting bored, Brendan, I'm, I'm good, good. dog. I'm you good. Bored? No, I'm good, bored? man. I'm oh, good. I'm trying to explain some shit. No, I heard that was a long explanation. No, yeah. no, I thought we were done. I'm trying to explain shit. It's a mystery why people don't like this guy. Truly an enigma. There's almost too much to hate about Shaw because I've barely scratched the surface. Haven't even mentioned any of the UFC shit. His beef with Ariel Hawan 
funny, his constant commentator fuck-ups, mixing up Bobby Green and Kevin Holland, boy, I wonder why he made that mistake. The multitude of grifts he's involved in, from his new Japanese whiskey embarrassingly named after his son, to his connection with this shady CBD oil company that tried to bribe people for positive reviews on his first special, and now this truly humiliating line of thick boy merch he's trying to sell. Like, who is buying this shit? Brendan couldn't even find somebody else to model this overpriced garbage, so it's just lots of pictures of him looking like an idiot posing in his own clothing on the website. It's, it's asshole puckering. For a guy that's constantly talking about the soy boys and the betas coming after his buddy Joe, Brenda sure got a lot of bitch in her blood. I know Shab's not gonna take my advice because I'm not as rich and don't have as many subscribers as him, but I'll just throw this out there in case one of his employees is listening. Brendan, pull up your big boy skinny jeans, put on your matching responsibility hat, and start acting like a fucking man. Stop stealing jokes and pretending to be something you're not. Stop acting like all your faults are fabricated by some secret cabal of online trolls and haters. Don't walk around like you're the only one on the planet whose shit don't stink. You seem to realize that people like Rogan because they think he's real and honest, so maybe you should start taking some notes and stop being such a phony fuck. A little self-reflection and personal accountability goes a long way with people. If you did that and honestly tried to improve, you might see a change in the way people react to you. But fuck it. That's clearly not gonna happen. I don't know why I'm bothering trying to help. So keep fucking up. I don't care. Have Bent Pixels copyright strike this video. We could fight in the streets if you want. Sounds like a good time to me. Honestly, it's just fun watching the Fighter and the Kids subreddit document your every blunder. You homeless cats are some dedicated motherfuckers. Some real fucking investigative journalists over there. I don't even know what the fuck they're saying half the time because they speak in shabisms, but it's fun at least. More fun than Brendan's actual podcast. I don't know, I just love watching communities turn against the people that brought them together in the first place. It's it's so much fun. Brings me back to the good old days. You guys almost make Reddit tolerable. Almost. Guess we can all look forward to watching Shab's new special next month. I know I am. Not because I think it'll be any good, but because I guarantee butt fucking tea there will be more than a few stolen jokes in there. And maybe, just maybe, It'll finally force Rogan to have another chat with our pal Brendan about the path his career's on. A chat that'll leave him feeling surprised all over again. A big fat salute to you homeless cats that helped me with this video. You folks actually managed to make Schlobcast entertaining with your shit posts. Keep fighting the good fight. Here's hoping Brendan doesn't try to shut you down like everyone else that's criticized him. I'll catch you fellas later. I'm already late for my shift to Chang's. See ya.